what is the difference between a mobile application and a desktop application? And is there any way of converting the code between the two? This is a question that I got from Rich Williams on my Web Developers Working Week episode five video that I did uh, a few weeks back. This is a very good question and it's something that I've tackled before as a freelancer. I've built several mobile applications and I've built several desktop applications as well. So the technology that I use, uh, when we're just talking about, say, a website, then I would make sure that that website is responsive. A responsive website will respond to the device's resolution. So, for example, if the the screen size is, say, 360, then it will go through a series of rule sets in the CSS to change the, the CSS to fit and to match those rule sets. And what I'm talking about here is media queries. So you would write a series of media queries, then you can configure certain CSS rules to work within those boundaries. And you can have several of those. So you could have media queries tailored towards different screen sizes. So you could create a different user experience on a tablet or on a, uh, a mobile phone. And of course, you can tailor that depending on whether it's in portrait mode or landscape mode. And of course, when it goes to a desktop, then it's just the usual desktop experience. And also with the uh, desktops these days, they're getting wider and bigger, you know, 4K, 5K, 8K. You can do some really interesting stuff, especially with dashboards when the screen resolution, the screen size, I should say, is much, much bigger. However, I recommend it is designed in a mobile first kind of way. So you would design from the smallest device outwards. So you would design it as it would be on a mobile phone first, and then perhaps a tablet, and then perhaps a desktop, and then perhaps a projector, and so on and so forth. It's easier to design it first from the mobile's point of view, than to go the other way and then try and change how the elements fit on the page, depending on how big the, the size is. It's better to do it from the mobile first and work outwards. Now, if we're talking about an actual application that you download from the app store, then that is something completely different because this is something that you have to build and compile and upload to the app store. You can't just access it through a web browser. You can't just run the same app that you download from the app store on a web browser. You can, however, download those things to different devices. So you would be able to download an app that you run on your mobile phone to perhaps a tablet if it is allowed. And it's up to the developer, it's up to the project to decide whether or not you can do so. Now, I've mentioned that I have created many mobile applications before as a freelance developer. And the first thing I ask the client is what device does this mobile application need to run on? And also what operating system does it need to be run on as well? Because if they come back and say it needs to run on all of them, or if it needs to run on both uh, iOS and Android, then perhaps you can build something in a cross-platform sense. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Also, if it doesn't need to use really native hardcore stuff from the device, so if it's not running any kind of heavy graphics work, if it's not a mobile game, for example, and if it is just a series of user forms that they interact with, and then the data gets sent off to some third party API that perhaps they've created, or perhaps you'll create, as I've done before, um, then perhaps you can get away with cross-platform application development. And that means that you build the code once and then you can compile it down to different native devices. So I use Appcelerator for this. This is a very good way of creating cross-platform apps. And in Appcelerator, you will be writing your code in, say, JavaScript. 
and you will be using perhaps SQL Lite as a way of storing that information. And you'll be writing things in perhaps Alloy.js, that's the framework, or even Angular, as you can do so now. And what you do is you write normal JavaScript, and that will then build and compile down to iOS, to Windows, to Android, and you can even tie it down to specific devices. So you can say, I only want uh, Android at this particular version. I only want uh, iPhone at this particular version, or I only want the I the Apple Watch, or I only want to have it on Apple TV. So you can actually go very granular as to how you configure these things. And I've done this quite frequently. Um, one thing that I often get asked is, can I just build some forms in a mobile app and sort of like make it, make it look fancy? And it's extremely powerful because now you're working on a mobile or a tablet, you have access to all the bits and pieces that that piece of hardware has access to. So you've got access to Bluetooth, you've got access to GPS, you've got access to the camera, which means that you can um, record video, record audio and take photos, which means that it's extremely powerful. You are basically limited to your imagination. And the clients that I've had have done some very interesting things just by having some user interaction on a mobile phone that send information to a API that perhaps I or someone else has created. Of course, however, if you wanted to build specific native stuff on perhaps an iPhone, then you would be running Swift or Xcode, right? So you'd be writing in those kind of languages to harness the power of the native device. Same with Android, you would be writing in Android. Now I'm sure that there'll be lots of people saying that uh, cross-platform is useless and native is the only way, the true way of writing mobile applications. And yeah, whatever, if that's, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. But I'm a freelancer and I try and do whatever is best for the project and what is best for the client's needs. So whenever I tackle a problem like this, I try and see it from the business perspective as well as from a programmer's perspective. And I guess that has enabled me to do some very interesting stuff with Accelerator. Thanks ever so much to Rich Williams for asking this question. It's a very good question. And I know that you've asked other questions and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I'm just incredibly busy right now. But thanks ever so much again. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.